Okay. But yeah, so when you, when you think about it, you know, the money rotates in a certain amount. Now, they chose not to back it by gold because that way it becomes a fiat currency and they just keep printing, 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 printing. Now, I, when you think about the numbers, we're 14 trillion in debt, but yet rich people, CEOs and banksters are getting richer, richer, richer. So if we're in debt, how the fuck they keep getting richer, but we keep getting poor. Oh, but then they turned around, and I think it was one of the government officials that turned around and said that each American would end up owing like $64,000 a piece in order to fix the actual budget. Why it gotta be us? We work hard, we pay our taxes, what well, most of us do. We work hard, we pay our taxes. We buy, therefore, you know, buy into the economy, keep the economy going. But then, when we start being stingy with our money because we see that we can't afford to keep spending our money, then they come up with some other way to keep us from getting less money. By coming up with several laws that actually increase the tax or increase what you pay the government, but also decrease your check. Another thing I don't get is, if I'm a CEO of a company, okay, and I'm making like a billion dollars, right? And I make some business decisions that weren't smart. What's the first thing I would do as a CEO? I would cut my own rate of pay and those higher up by a certain amount. Why would I mess with the people at the bottom? Why do I mess with the people who drive the trucks? Why would I mess with the people who put the product out on the shelves? Why do I mess with the people who break down the product? Why would I mess with the people who make the product? To me, that doesn't make any sense. What makes sense is that me as a CEO should take the responsibility for my actions that I did with the company and decrease my own pay in order to make up for it, in order to balance it out. Therefore, allowing them people to still be able to work, you know, work hard and keep, you know, stuff like that. And, pe and then you get most people who say, oh, well, it's not really that easy. Yeah, it's not easy to get off greed. You're right. It's not easy to stop being greedy. But instead of us doing that, CEOs turn around and take bonuses when they lose money. And so do banks and stuff like that. And then turn around and would demote your pay and demote your hours and probably even fire you. Oh, we got to let some people go. Okay, you got to let me go. I'm busting my ass. I got a family to feed. But you don't give a fuck about that. But what you do give a fuck is that you have enough money in your pocket to go buy you another Ferrari. But see, businesses don't understand. We're the reason why you make money. You're not the reason why you make money. Be smart. You're not the reason why you make money. We're the ones who have the customer buy your product. Without us, you don't have a business. I love when corporate be like, oh, I built this, I built No, you didn't. The consumers did. Because, put it like this. If I was open up an Italian restaurant with some money I borrow, because you you know how them people who be like, oh, I built my business, most of them get millions of dollars loaned to them by some rich family member. They don't work hard and save that money up and they open their own business. No, they borrow that money from somebody. Or they borrow from one of their friends, you know, they grew up, you know, they went to, you know, Skull and Bones with, whatever, sometimes, you know, whatever that is. But... They borrow that money. And then they can pay back when they want to. They don't work hard, work several years, save that money up, and then take that money to buy their own business. Most CEOs don't do that. Because the ones who do do that, they no longer have a job anymore. Why? Because the big corporations is pushing them out because they don't want the competition. Because they know with competition, people will be more likely to go there. But then... When you think about it, it's not all the CEO's fault. It's our fault as consumers. Here's the thing. You get a Walmart. You got all these small businesses. Walmart super lowers their prices. What do we do? Instead of remaining loyal to these businesses that have good quality goods and services, we go, oh, that's cheaper. I can put more money in my pocket. 
that's a natural thing for people to do. I'm not saying you're wrong for doing it, but that's a natural thing for people to do. But then when you do that, you realize that all these small businesses, they're losing. Then when they close and shut down, guess what Walmart does? It jacks back up their prices. Then you're sitting up there complaining, talking about, oh, well, that's not fair. That's not right. They're all expensive, this and that. You should have stuck with the other guy. I know it's hard to do, but that's what you should have done. I'd be better off going to a bread house and shop and getting fresh bread than going to get some cheap bread at Walmart and then find out it's stale because they decided to put out some old product, which actually happens a lot. I've seen that firsthand. That some places will put out old product. Oh, we don't want to waste any money. You may, you already waste money. You know how much food Walmart throws away? In meat department, I done seen where they put some idiot in charge of the meat department and he sit up there and we were throwing away five thousand dollars a day in meat five five i kid you not five thousand dollars now how can you justify throwing away five thousand dollars worth of food you can't but you know how you don't have to throw away that food if you lower the price on your food but sell more units, not only are you still making about the same amount of money, you know what I'm saying? But you're not throwing away as much food. But then I also heard from another manager that Walmart gets paid for throwing away food. So you'd rather throw away food than to make sure that the consumer gets it. Does that make sense? That's how CEOs think. I understand you got to impress your investors and stuff like that, but you don't fuck people over to impress your investors. And since when did impress your investors have to do with you making sacrifices on that level? If your investor can't understand how business is run, why the fuck, do we, why the fuck would they invest in the first place? I mean, it's not that simple as I said it, but I'm just, you know, giving like a generalization of it. It's like, I will be better off as a CEO giving you quality goods and make sure I don't waste anything then for me to sit there and close the up to me competition works think about it if I had my big business in the middle and I have 10 other companies competing with me I would rather have that and still make over 200 million annually than have all these businesses closed down have everybody working for me and then I'm making billions and billions of dollars because the thing is, I'm gonna actually end up losing money in the long run because now I gotta find somebody else to compete with that's outside my area in order to bring money in. The thing is, if I'm making 200 million a year and I'm competing with these other people, each of these companies have people that's making money. That money, I feel like it's rotating. Say for instance, you got a clothing store, okay? You got a food store, and you got a uh, you got a gym, or you got um, a bread house, or a fast food place, and and stuff like that, or a restaurant. Each of these places can interact with each other. I can go to the gym and spend money to work out. Then people at the gym can go to this restaurant to go eat. Then people at the restaurant can go to this store to get some of the food that they need. Then people who work at that store, they can go over here and, and you know and do what and buy clothes and stuff like that. And then people who buy clothes, they can go here and buy food. They can go and you know get their car fixed. And the mechanics who get their car fixed, they can take that money. Do you see what I'm saying? And then guess what? They can still come. To my company the people in my company are spending money there and them people there can spend money at my company and if we want to make more money we can export that not jobs but we can export our goods and then make money from that and then they can go ahead and buy stuff from us and then if we need anything from over there like some materials we can buy that from them make our stuff and then we can sell it here and we just keep the money rotating businesses don't think like that Businesses think, businesses don't think of any of that. All they think about is how much money can I put in my pocket. But see, think about it. The reason why they're doing that is because something is going down. 
something's about to happen. They building all these underground shelters. They grabbed all the gold years ago. They grabbed all the gold. So right now we're using fiat currency. They, they build all these underground shelters. Okay. They're throwing preservatives and foods. People are getting killed off in mass shootings and stuff. Depopulization is happening. Something is going down. I'm telling you. They're trying to take your guns from you so you can't defend yourself. It's not that so it can make it a safer world. No, they're, they're doing it so you can't defend yourself. Then when you chose not to give them up your guns, then they start to buy all the rounds. Okay, you bought, wait, let's say he bought one billion rounds or something. Why? Why is it that when people say they're not giving up their guns, you want to buy all the rounds, but there's nothing to be suspicious about? Oh, and then on top of that, when you think about it, they start military rides and police around the same time, too. All this goes back to 9-11. 9-11 was the false flag they needed to start destroying this country. Because with that, they used fear and they used hate. Okay? They used fear to control you. To say, you got to get this. You got to buy this. You got to have that. You got to give up your rights. You got to give up your freedoms. They use hate. So that you can take each other out without having to worry about them. They can go and do whatever they want. Because they know you're too busy hating on that person. They made you think about it. When you think, think about it. When black people do something, they make you judge the whole entire race. When Hispanics do something, they make you judge the whole entire race. When a few Muslims do something, they make you judge the whole entire race and religion. But when white people do something, what happens? Nothing. Don't nobody judge white people on a massive level. They don't. People just recently start opening their eyes. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, the government knows what's coming. They got, they got something planned. They know something is good not happening this way. And so that's the reason why they're trying to take all your, your guns and your weapons and all that type of stuff from you. Because they know something big is going down. And they're trying to make sure you're not protected from it. Now they got to a point where they making you get the chip, uh, the card with the chip on it. Oh, it's more secure. If it's more secure, why are you making me get it? Shouldn't that be a choice? Shouldn't it be a choice whether I want to go left or right? I shouldn't be made to go in either direction. That's not protecting me. Taking away my freedom is not protecting me. Taking away my freedom is actually enslaving me. That's not protection. And like, uh, there's a speech that Kennedy made a long time ago uh, when he was in office. I think it was in like 1961, 1962. He basically said that we should be able to have freedom and peace. We can. But every time there's peace, the government steps in throw their little two cent in there and they create chaos and they tell us hey you can't govern yourselves let us control you think about it all these countries around the world was peaceful by themselves but because of propaganda and because of lies and stuff like that they make it seem like that these countries were cannibals and murderers and all this type of stuff but that stuff didn't happen until the US government got involved those countries wasn't originally like that any place, no place is perfect. Places gonna have this country has problems. So why are we spending billions of dollars helping out other countries when we can't even help our own country? Like I said, something is going down. For CEOs to sit up there and make sure you have no money in your pocket and make sure they got all the money, it's like they're trying to get ready to create a new currency that only rich people. It's like think about it. It's like. I have this currency that works for everybody. Okay? Let's call it the uh the pinnacle currency. It works for everybody. Everybody's being good, everybody's making it, everybody's alright. Now you may call it socialism, but tell them the truth, people keep what they earn. You earn that money, you keep that money, you spend that money, you keep what you earn. Ain't no oh I'm gonna have them do this for my one. No, you keep what you earn. And on the pinnacle currency everything's good everything's balanced it's backed by gold okay or it's backed by something that's 
materialistic that's actually worth something okay rich people are like we can't get any richer our cap is at this we can't we ain't got no more money oh you know what we can do we can go ahead we know that the pinnacle currency is backed by this material let's take all that material make the pinnacle currency into a fiat currency print more and more and more throw into the market cause inflation we still have the materialistic that's actually worth something we can use that to create a new currency that's bounced off that materialistic object and then they have no choice but to go buy that currency but we're going to start them from zero and make them build back up while we already have ours that's what's going down the government's trying to take everything you got so that you have to build back up and start from zero and then you have to beg for scraps that's basically what trickle down economics is when you think about it trickle down economics is basically a slave master's way of thinking about it, the economy it's basically saying you give us everything and we give you the scraps we give, we give you what's left over I don't care what nobody said. When you look at it, the government is the new slave masters. Just look at it. If you don't do anything they want you to do, they either kick you out, disown you, kill you, have you arrested, whatever. You don't have no freedom. You don't have no free breaking thinking. Because if you did, the government wouldn't be as powerful as it is today. But then at the same time, that's our fault as Americans. Because as Americans, we should have stopped that from going a long time ago. But what we, they did was they used our hatred they have us go against each other for stupid reasons and while we're too busy going against each other the government did whatever the hell they wanted to do so that just something to think about I'm not saying I'm right or wrong you know it's just something to think about